Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Sunday. I'm out in the garage and I'm working on the floor still on the 34 naturally. And what this is going to do is this is actually going to go right behind the base of the seat into the trunk area. And my sheet metal is going to my sheet metal is going to attach to this because the way I built the seat frame, there's nowhere for me to attach the sheet metal to it. So I'm going to get this cleaned up real quick and then I'll show you where it's going in the car and why I decided to go this route. What I need to make sure is I need to make sure my gas tank doesn't sit below the floor. I don't want to have to shape this floor to go underneath the gas tank. I want the gas tank to be above the floor in the trunk area. So I'm going to get this mounted and get my gas tank in here. But what I may do is just set some sheet metal in here for now. Just so I can make sure that the gas tank is above the floor of the trunk. And then I can figure out where my supports need to be on either side. And then I'm going to add those in. I'm going to modify the gas tank just a little bit. And, uh, but I want to get the gas tank set in place before I get my floor of the, of the trunk done. It won't be mounted permanently. It'll just be sitting in here for now. But I'm going to get this piece of metal mounted in here. And then uh, just keep moving forwards. Get that tacked in place. I want to make sure that at the same height as my frame rail. So now I have a place to mount my sheet metal to for the floor. Now what I'm going to do is just temporarily put some sheet metal down that I have. Hopefully I have a piece that's kind of close to this size and already cut. And then I can set my gas tank in and then I can kind of... The gas tank is on a little bit of an angle, the way those 50, 50, mid 50s, 55, whatever, 53 to 56 F100 I think they are. The gas tanks are on a little bit of an angle. So I need to keep it level, so I just have to shim this bottom. And they sit at almost a 45 degree level, uh, the way the flanges are, because they're mounted off to the side of the, of the frame rail. You'll see when I put it back in. So let's get the gas tank, well, let's get some sheet metal in place first. All right, so I have a piece of sheet metal. It's way bigger than what I had planned on putting in. But at the time being, it's all I have, and it will definitely work. Now, guy, I just want to say, and I know I've said it in the past, I have not been doing this stuff long. And this is something I've always wanted to do. There are guys uh, that watch this channel that have professional, you know, garages. This is literally what they do for a living. And... I know I may not do things the way that other people do, or, or better yet, I know I probably don't do things right, and I'm not claiming I know everything, I'm not claiming I do everything correctly, 
I'm just doing things the best to my knowledge and I'm just really trying to think things through and just do the best I can and like I said sometimes it, it may not be right but at the end of the day if if the car goes down the road and it doesn't catch fire and it's safe maybe even a little overbuilt then I'm happy it means it's a success that means I accomplished what I set out to do and, and to me that's just what means the most to me so and there are a lot of guys out there that are in the same boat as I am don't have a lot of fancy tools and don't have shops and we're just in the, our backyards building these cars and it's pretty cool how it's going to mount on an angle you can see the flange coming up the sides on either side on the driver's side there's actually a mount on the gas tank where it mounts in so I, I assume this must just sit down inside a cradle or something and then it just mounts on that one end uh, the hole up top here is for the sending unit that's obviously the fill hole and then right behind the seat is the fitting for the pickup tube. I have some body mount rubber from my sedan that I bought before I channeled it. It wasn't channeled when I got the car. So I bought the wood kit and all the mounts and all, all this crap. And I ended up channeling it and didn't use any of the stuff that I ended up buying. So I have all the rubber from the, the body kit. Alright, so that's an eighth inch rubber spacer. Alright, so that right there is right on the money. So it only needed to come up an eighth of an inch. So... Uh, actually, no, I take that back. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to add an eighth of an inch everywhere. I'm going to add an eighth of an inch there, and then I'm going to add a quarter of an inch, so two of these rubber spacers on this end, and that should give me an eighth of an inch gap between the bottom of the tank and the trunk floor, and then I'll be able to put some rubber welting underneath it when the time comes. Also what I want to do is when I mount my horizontal, my angled pieces for my mount, I'm going to probably end up building some stands under here so things don't fall underneath the tank. I'm going to probably build like a riser for the back of this. Just a sheet metal riser, just like a, a filler panel. So when the time comes, like I said, I'll be able to kind of fill that in. So I don't want things falling down in, underneath the tank and stuff and maybe in the future puncturing the tank. So. It's pretty much where I think the tank needs to be. I'm going to, actually I'm going to center the tank. Is this rib right here in the middle of this. I'm going to center that right in the center of the seat frame. There we go. That looks good. Alright, still nice and level. I'll be able to fine tune it in the future. But essentially that's where things need to be. I have my filler here, and what I plan on doing in the future is I need to find a two inch, an angled two inch rubber hose, or else I can cut this down and pie cut it. But my gas tank filler, I'm going to keep it inside underneath the trunk of the car. It's going to be somewhere in this vicinity. I just don't want to cut a hole. I just can't bring myself to cut a hole up, up in the quarter. George. When he built the car, never cut a hole in the car, so I really don't want to do that if, if I don't have to. Plus, like I had said, George George didn't do it in the past either when he built the car, so uh, I need to get like a two-inch angled hose or at least a, a coupler, a rubber hose coupler, and then I'll just pie cut and weld this tube. That's probably what I'm going to end up having to do. But I want to put that fill tube somewhere in this vicinity. Obviously, I have to make sure that the deck lid will clear it, but I'd be happy with it right there. 
move you guys back a little bit so we can get a little bit of a better view. A little bit wider of an angle. The only downfall with this particular camera is it doesn't have a wide angled lens. But it does the job. Let's get some measurements on those angled pieces. And we can get those cut and put in the car. Right, this isn't ideal the way I'm doing this, but it's working. So I guess ideal is irrelevant. Uh, make sure I have enough room for my spacer or my welting, whatever it is I end up needing to do in the future. You see the one inch angle that's coming out, uh, the one inch box tube that's coming out. You can see my spacer. That's the one mounting hole that's on the tank. Obviously, this will have to just come out just a touch. That rubber will be the replacement for now for the welting in the future. You can see here what I have. I have my magnets. I got this magnet here and a magnet there, just holding it up in place. You can see the little bit of a gap in between the flange on the gas tank and then the one inch stock. You can see my rubber spacer. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a measurement. A vertical measurement come well close to vertical coming off of this cross support going from the frame rails coming up and then filling in this space here so this will come down and then stop and then it'll drop straight down to this cross support there I'll add another one on the other side and then I'll, what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to probably take another piece of this angle I'm wondering if I should build that whole thing out of angle iron you know, I think I might. This is the stuff that takes so long. And when you're filming, it's... You don't want to film the whole process of you thinking and trying to figure things out as you go. It makes sense for me to do it out of the angle. For, for more than one reason. For one reason, I have more angle iron than I do box tube. I'm going to need more box tube to finish off the top of my bulkhead. I think I'm going to remove this and make it out of that inch and a half angle iron. It'll be plenty plenty durable for what I'm trying to do. Alright, so I'm just going to do that. I'm going to remove this whole thing that I just spent 10 minutes doing and replace it with angle iron. But what I need to do first is I'm going to cut it at 40 degrees, this one end, because I know this is what the angle is. It's a 40 degree angle. I'm gonna cu I'll cut that at 40 degrees and then I'll be able to figure out where it needs to go on the bottom and then I'll build that that platform for the fuel tank out of that angle iron. I think what I'm going to have to do is notch this out just a little bit because it's a little thick. I can do it after the tank's out. After everything else. I'll be able to kind of just be able to notch it a little bit because just like a quarter of an inch because this is rubbing on the tank and I want to keep it even with the outside of the seat frame. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing I was talking about on the driver's side, which is I get this mounted with an eighth inch rubber spacer. Uh, but what I'm going to do differently is I'm just going to put a, one small quick tack on it. need to hold it real quick so I can get a measurement for the support that's going to come up from the bottom of the frame the floor. The gas tank's going to slide over just a touch. So now what I need to do is measure from the floor up and then build the support here. And then I'll probably end up using this angle and going all the way across to the other side. Like I said, kind of building like a like a pocket for the tank to sit down into so I know it's not going to go anywhere. I can do welting around the top of it, through bolt it, and the tank should be good. Shouldn't go anywhere. Still leaves me tons of room in the trunk. And uh, 
should work out pretty good. All right, what I decided to do real quick was cut the driver's side bracket real fast. So I, all right, so it's at 14 inches. I'm just gonna cut one of those real quick so I can mimic it on the driver's side and then get that one set so then I can make my, my, uh, my cross piece. Like I said, just keep moving forward. So I'll be right back. Yeah. And I ended up taking the angle iron and notching it. You can see I notched it here. I took about three eighths of an inch out of it, and I got to do the same on the other side, on the dry, on the passenger side. So the gas tank is actually going to sit down in here, and this this is going to kind of. I made this relief to give the gas tank just a little more room. So I'm going to put my rubber spacer on top. And then get that gas tank get that gas tank situated so you can see where it's notched out. It'll fit right under here. I have the gas tank raised up with the rubber pad and then also with the rubber pad on the side here. And then this is gonna weld flush on the outside of the back of the seat frame. So I need to get the welder set up so I can get a tack weld on that. Oh, this is a pain in the butt. No, nope. pop that down. My rubber spacer fell out. If I can get it tacked right here. Okay. I think once I get this tank mount kind of situated, I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the sheet metal on the floor for this part of the car done. Some people don't realize how hard it is to do this filming. It takes so much more time. It just takes so much more time. It's unbelievable. I don't have my little rubber spacer in here. All right, all right, well, I want to add another little weld onto that bracket because it's really loose. And I don't want it to break off in the middle of trying to mount the tank. Alright, so I'm kind of just really struggling with, with filming everything right now because I'm just kind of trying to, really just trying to figure things out. And it's me just kind of sitting there doing almost nothing more or less to try to figure out exactly what it is I'm going to do. But for now what I'm doing is figured I need to make the bottom portion of the tank mount where it co goes across the floor underneath the tank. I'm going to notch these ends out on either end uh, so it'll fit in the channel in, in that um, angle iron. So I'm going to cut these real quick and I'll show you exactly what it is that I'm working on and why, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Right, so let's go for a quick walk. I'll show you what I'm doing and why. I'm just trying to figure it out as I go. So what I'm doing is this piece of angle iron is going to sit down here like this. And the tank is going to sit in it. But what I'm worried about is if I put this in here, I'm not going to be able to get this sheet metal in and out or in. So I feel like I need to finish this structure underneath here, get the sheet metal in before I put this piece in. Either that or make it removable. I'm just kind of struggling with exactly how it is I want to do that. 
trying to figure out what's the best way it's going to be to do it, to go about doing it. So that's why I haven't been filming. I'll move you up a little bit closer. I'm almost thinking about uh, make some fun here. adding some tabs down here that go out, that bolt onto the top of the frame, and then taking some material like this, like this angle iron, actually putting it up underneath here, and then on the driver's side, drilling a hole through and cutting these, these tack welds. So then I'd have two bolts here, and then two bolts up top, and then this whole structure would actually come out. Um, I kind of think that might be the way to go. It's just a lot, a lot more work. But I'm toying with that idea. So that's why I really haven't been filming a whole lot at the moment. Just really trying to figure out the best way, the best way to go about this, the best way, the, the way that makes the most sense. Um, and like I said, it's probably going to be more work, and unfortunately a lot of times in situations like this, the best way to do it, it usually is more work. I don't want to cut corners and regret it in the future when I need to get under there for some reason. I don't know what reason that would be, uh, but I feel like that's what I have to do. The reason why is I can't, I can't put a finished piece of sheet metal under here. I need to build my exhaust, I need exhaust hangers, I need to do my brakes, my fuel system, the wiring, and it's a lot of it's got to run underneath on the frame rail, and I don't want to be working on my back doing all that stuff, I'd rather be above the car, and if I were to build that, this structure in permanently with the sheet metal under it, even if I were to put the sheet metal in with zip screws, with self tappers, I still, I wouldn't be able to get it out of there, so I feel like I have to make this structure removable. So I think I'm going to end up going that route. I'm going to make some brackets for up top like I did in the center. Get some tabs welded on these outer ends, on the bottom ends of the of the angled brackets. And then get this welded on so after I know it's all set for it where it's where it needs to be. And then I'll be able to put the tank, be able to take it in and out. Well there's already holes in the frame so that helps. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. It's going to take me a little bit longer, but it is what it is. That's all right. So I'll show you what I did. I just fired up the welder. I'm going to get some of these little these little brackets welded in. I had a little bit of angle iron that I just cut into an inch and a half section. Two of them, one on either side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount them down here. So they'll mount, it's a little bolt on top of the frame rail. There's already holes right where I'm going to put the tabs. So I won't need to drill any holes, I'll just have to, I'll just be able to tap them and mount a bolt down in them. So I'm going to get these tab on each side welded on. So these will mount on top of the sheet metal after the floor is installed. So the way the tank is shaped, it's fatter on this end, and it goes and it goes uh, a half an inch narrower. So it's a quarter of an inch in each direction, you know, on either side. So it's a half an inch narrower. So that's why you see on the right hand side that metal piece is touching the floor of the car, and on this side there's a almost a half inch gap. So, and then on this side you'll see this bracket is going to be back a little bit further because this angle bracket is actually longer to compensate for the fatter tank whereas on this one on the driver's side it's going to be further forwards to line up with the hole everything's square it's just I had to build this bracketry to accept the tank the way it is you can see that sharpie line where it goes from right here it goes from three quarters uh, three eighths of an inch all the way over to three quarters of an inch and that again is because the tank gets wider as it goes down on this end so I need to just compensate for that so it can make sure it all works how it's supposed to so I'm gonna get these tabs welded on We 
going to be able to remove this whole gas tank mount. So I'm just going to tack it for now just so I know the tabs are in the right places. And then I can remove it and weld it when I can access it. Alright, so those tabs are where they need to be on the back. Now I'm going to do the ones up top on the angles. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this quarter inch stock because I have it and it'll be a little bit harder to drill but I can tap this instead of welding nuts on the bottom I can just bolt right into this so that'll save me a, that'll save me a little bit of time doing that so I'm gonna get these up underneath tacked in place I'll get these tacks cut and then I'll be able to pull that whole frame right out of there I'm gonna have to mark these with a sharpie and then trim them down because they're going to hit the tank. I turned up the heat just a touch because it's going to start. I want to make sure I could burn in a real good tack. cut back on the frame of the gas tank itself and then I should be able to remove it I guess the bottom tack weren't good enough right. came out in two pieces instead of one that wasn't the plan but I can make it work Looking at my battery life, I got my camera plugged in. Um, went in, grabbed some food real quick. I never stopped today for lunch, so I wanted to just try to get a bunch done, as, as much done as I could earlier today. I want to be able to finish off the top of the bulkhead, and in order to do that, I just need to do these miter corners. And I gotta get them down to a 45. I just want to keep moving forwards right now with all the fabrication and then I can always kind of come in the garage after work one night and then I can just drill some holes. I can tap those, tap the quarter inch thick tabs that I mounted that I welded onto the back of the seat frame or the bulkhead. So these two pieces here are going to be, that I'm cutting now, oh I can't take you over there, are for right behind the back of the seat. They go backwards and they go right underneath the rear window kind of towards the, the top of the rain gutters underneath the top of the quarters of the tulip panel. So that's where these are going to go. I'll show you guys how I'm going to do it. I'm going to kind of, they're going to be welded in there and they're going to be permanent. But 
I'll show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to incorporate them into the rain gutter. Uh, just because I think it's just going to kind of work out that way. The seat frame happens to be the same width as the rain gutter, which I did not mean to do that. Once I got it welded and built, I made some measurements and realized it's spot on. So I'll show you once this one's cut where it's going to go. I'm trying so when the seat frame comes up, comes up like this, it's lean back. This is basically going to go here, and this this end will be underneath underneath the uh, the rear window. It's a little thick as far as the material goes, but this is all I have as far as one inch stock. So I'm just going to use what I have. I can build my package tray, <clears throat> and then I'll be able to sheet metal the whole back of the seat, the wings over to the side of the body, and then up underneath the tulip panel. So I can, like I said the other day, hide the deck lid hinges and all that stuff. So I want to just, I want to separate the cabin inside the car from the trunk area because of the fuel and everything that's going to be back there. It shouldn't smell, but God forbid it did. I don't want to have to be able to, I don't want to be worrying about if for whatever reason I get like a gas odor or something like that from the fuel tank. I just don't want to be driving in the car getting a headache or whatever, you know. I want to make sure it's really sealed off good, so. I'll show you what I did. I got these two pieces cut down. You can see they're 45 These are going to go off the back corners of the seat frame going towards the back window. This one's already measured and cleaned off with the flap disc. I'm going to get this one cleaned off real quick and then uh, get it measured like this other one is and then i got to notch them out, cut them and notch them out. Still out in the garage, it's late. I'm trying to get as much done as I can. It's Sunday before I have to go to work tomorrow. So I want to kind of do a quick wrap up video on the back of the seat and the gas tank mount and show you guys what I got done today. So you can see you can see that the gas tank is just sitting there, but it's where it's going to be. You can see that the I got the tabs all welded on and cleaned up both sides. I'll drill holes down through this into the top of the frame and either weld in a nut or put a riv nut or something like that in there. And then also on the top of the gas tank over here. Let me drop let me lower the Lower the light a little bit, see if we can get a little bit, a bit more light in there. Top corner of that flange, I'll drill and mount onto the actual frame, but actually no, I'm sorry, I won't mount it there. This framework comes off and there's that quarter inch tab underneath. I'll tap, I'll drill and tap that tab. I'll then mount the gas tank here what I need to do is add another one of those tabs on this side of the gas tank because there isn't one. And then what I'll do is I'll drill in the corner here and on the corner on the bottom. And I'll get the gas tank mounted. Again, this sheet metal is just here so I could fit everything so I knew I'd have clearance with the gas tank on the floor of the car. I set the seat in place so you can kind of see what the bulkhead's going to look like. There is an arch on the rear, on the tulip panel of the car, so it's higher in the center and lower on both sides. And what that did was it actually lowered the two outside supports for the package tray. So this center one is higher, so it's going to have a little bit of a crown to it, which is fine. Uh, but it's basically right at the top of the seat. So at this point, the seat's sitting just on the frame. It's I still need to mount the frame, uh, the mount the seat. So I need to figure out exactly how it is I'm going to do that on the bottom and the top. 
there's really no reason for me to have the seat fold forward because there's really nothing there besides access to the pickup tube for the fuel system and at that point if I have to just remove the seat back for whatever reason I'll be able to do that but I'm not going to have it tilt forwards to the back there's really no reason for me to leave this space so the package tray is going to come all the way over and go right to the side of the car and then this will come down and go down here and I'm probably going to do a filler piece in between the quarter panel and the frame uh, it'll be sheet metal it'll line up with the floor it'll just go right to the back to the wheel well so it'll essentially just fill in this space here I'll do that on both sides I did those on my sedan uh, just to tie everything in and then again I just seam sealed it to the outside quarter uh, so I didn't want to weld it to the quarter and add heat if I didn't need to um, so really next is to get to work on the sheet metal for the floors I wanted to get the structure built underneath the seat or at least to a point where it's tacked together and it's going to be where where it's going to stay um, if I need to make any changes before I do the sheet metal I still can do that because everything's just tacked together I want to start building my sheet metal template so what I was planning on doing was starting here I'll go to here down and then up that's what I had originally planned I don't want a, a seam down on the bottom I'd rather have it up here so I'll have it one piece go down here and then up to here and then my next piece will go from here to this edge and then I'll have to shape it uh, kind of get it I'm only gonna go a little bit past underneath this tulip panel underneath where the window is and then stop and then because this interior panel is gonna come down and meet it uh, I'm gonna end my night here appreciate everyone watching thank you it was a long day in the garage I got a lot done it was nice it's always nice when you can spend a good day out in the garage and get a lot done uh, I don't always have the day to myself and today just happened to be a day to myself so I tried to take advantage of it the most I could so uh, let me see uh, I've had a few people recently asking me for my address because they wanted to send me some stuff which is really cool and I appreciate it I, I never ask anybody to send me anything uh, but I ended up getting a P.O. box because I was just a little nervous putting my home address out there on the internet so I have a post office box now it's P.O. Box 771 in Middleborough, Massachusetts, uh, 02346. It's gonna be at the end of the sh at the end of the video. Uh, I'm gonna start adding that to the to the videos. So it's it's this old hot rod, P.O. Box 771, Middleborough, Mass. Um, like I had said, the reason I put it out there is because there's been multiple people asking me for my address. Uh, they want to send me whatever they want to send me. No one's actually ever said what they want to send me, but they said that I, they wanted to send me some things. And again, I was just kind of hesitant to put out, to put my my home address out there to the world. So, uh, you know, I got kids, and you know, just for safety reasons, I'm sure everybody understands. So, that's that. Like I said, it'll be at the end of the video. And thanks for following along. It, I, I've made a lot of progress recently in a short amount of time, and it feels good. So I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.